Um, James. We'll start with just introduction. You want to do? Yeah, well, whatever you want, man. I'm, I'm, I'm lighting these. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be the actual interviewer and I'll do my job properly. Yeah. All right, it's Hayden. I'm here with Rob. He's my trivia host. And explain a bit about yourself. Hey, my name's Rob. And uh, I guess I'll grab this one. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, Hayden's trivia host. I asked him the questions, but uh, he decided to, we, uh, to flip the script on me. Change and he's uh, he's going to ask me some questions. So we'll uh, we'll see how this goes. Uh, no promises that I'll know the answers, but... Uh, We'll see what happens. All right, we'll start it off. We'll go, what will you, What do you do as a job or what are you doing right now? Just generally, career-wise, whatever you're doing. Okay, so career-wise at the moment, um, so I'm an MC by nature. That's what I do. Get on microphones and I try to entertain. Pretty fitting. Do all that right sort of, yeah, exactly, pretty fitting. Um, so, you know, do trivia. I've been basketball commentator for about 10 years. No, no, it's about 12 now. Um, done various types of functions. Uh, so that's been the career and uh, as of recently became a marriage celebrant. Um, but COVID really didn't work out well for that. So I had to pick up a nine to five and uh, did nine to five. So I'm selling timber at the moment, but the, uh, the goal that is to not, the, the goal is to not work nine to five. Yeah. And the goal is to do MC stuff the whole time. I so. took note of that because I thought, I thought I heard you mention the nine to five mm. idea. Mm. So I wanted to get your thoughts on nine to fives. Why are you for or against and why? Right. I'm not for the nine to five. I don't want to work the nine to five. And I think that as a society, um, we have these regimented ideas and these regimented education systems that force you into a nine to five, right? Now, I believe, I view a nine to five uh, that, that I think it saps the creativity out of the individual. So you prefer, yeah, you may as well hold it, but you prefer, yes, education is cool in high school, but unless it's for you generically in terms of doctors, engineers, yeah. lawyers, that type of thing, do you think the creative aspect going to a career is the most important part? And that's why you choose more creative topics such as what you're doing right now. Yes if and they, no. Like, um, yeah, if you want to be a doctor or a lawyer or a nurse or something, you need, you need the education. Education is important. I'm not going to dispute that. Yeah. Right. But there is definitely a side of life that if you can get paid doing your hobby, that's really cool, and we don't. And there's 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 no av there's no like avenue that says yeah this is how you get there. Like you've sort of just got to just figure it out. Like I, I like I'll be honest with you, I've done trivia nights. It didn't work. Like I did trivia nights at this factory in Bayswater for about a month and on trial run, and at most I got three people for for like six weeks. No one was interested, and there was this other one. Um, I'm not going to name any names. But there was this other one where I literally did it for about 18 months and each and every single week there was like three teams for three people. And I went every single week. It feels really repetitive. You know? And and it was just it never worked. It never took off. It never did well. So like these sort of these sort of obstacles come up in sort of looking at one of these jobs and one of these sort of careers. But it's all about finding the avenue. Like I've been doing this for like twelve years now and I'm almost self-sufficient as an MC. Yeah. Um, and you, it's just like, it takes 12 years. It literally takes 12 years. It takes 15 years and it takes trying new things out. You know? I was going to ask, my whole this one, this might be a long one. Yeah. I feel like society and especially you feel parents as well to mm -hmm. an extent, with more creative aspects, especially like entrepreneurial type things, people aren't, people feel like they can't be patient mm -hmm. in a career. They can't wait that 10, 15 years to pursue a career that can, you know, exponentially pay them long term. Mm -hmm. And with that more creative aspect, and that's where majority of the high paying jobs are, hypothetically. Mm -hmm. But like, how old are you? 19. 19. I'm 26. So we're pretty much of the same generation. Yeah, generation. Right? Yeah. Seven years. Are you millennial? Are you in that? Or are you just under? Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> All right then. It yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, but like, here, like your, our parents are probably the same age or very similar, right? <coughs> they grew up in a time where education was just becoming important, right? Yeah. And they've and if the if they didn't have like a university education, now they're seeing they might they may or may not see the detriment of that. You know, they might have oh, I've got to do this, I've got to do this. This is all I can do. But um, so they have this they have that idea and, and they should have that idea. But these days, I mean, you can make money on TikTok. Exactly. Well, I was going to say. 
almost it started with you know the farming all that that's way long ago but when the universities and education came in it's university or bust you almost feel and because they're that generation that were within that system you'd think they pursue it onto their kids of course Mm -hmm. however with the tech age of attention is the economy right now yeah with you know tiktok as i said youtube facebook whatever whatever it is Mm -hmm. video instead of you gotta be the one who's creating rather than consuming and it's not just video but it's the same with mc you're creating rather than consuming basketball you're creating the idea and all that for basketball trivia whatever it is and that's the type of thing you gotta be lucky right i'm not saying drop everything like I'm working you work pretty hard towards it right and like you've got to have luck involved like you have to have the right opportunities at the right time um and they they don't come along for everybody they don't no. like working for you working do, doing your passion job doesn't come along for everybody you know and it might not and that's why sometimes people say nine to five sure but then or education then but do a side hustle mm-hmm. you know make the Working nine to five until your six to twelve pays for your twenty four seven. If you get what I mean. I so mean. after school or jo- work, work that nine to five, whatever you say, that six to twelve can eventually progress to paying. You know, mm. forever, I guess. Mm. And and as long as you enjoy doing it, you can keep doing it. And I got an interesting one here. Yep. This one, this one took a lot of thought. Mm-hmm. Do you feel as if there's some sort of slave mindset of working every day for 50 years for a corporation, let's say, within the matrix, and then the only a handful truly re- release from it and can you know earn money outside of corporations or businesses? Absolutely. <laughs> Did you know why? Do you think that's just a, a fact or like? No, no, I think of many things, but I'll say I'll probably just say one thing about that is that. No, maybe two, like one sort of subset thing, right? Is that there is a lot of jobs out there that are purely created jobs for the sake of having jobs, right? And a lot of it is bureaucracy. A lot of it is, um, you know, re- regulation and things like that. Like, like an HR department, for example. No offense to anyone out there in human resources, <laughs> but... It's a job made for jobs. It's almost. a job made for jobs, Yeah. right? And um, if you like it, the the like in terms of the slave mindset, like I don't agree that it's slavery. Slavery, yes, because slavery is a significant thing, and it should hold weight when you're talking about yeah. it. Like slavery is one of the worst sins in human history, yeah. and I don't like the idea of calling it slavery, but it's definitely. It's definitely something similar. Similar, a similar and we, and, word, but and and we, we we don't have the English language yet to describe what it is. Yeah. Maybe we will in the future, but we I don't I don't think it's slavery per se because you have a job and you get paid and you go home. But but it's just is it, are people working meaningful jobs to them? Yeah. Like are you, are, you, are you proud of what you're doing? Are you are you creating something for yourself that means something to you? I think. Yeah. What I was going to say was that the reason why I said almost a slave mind, it's not really slavery, but slaves worked in order to keep a house over the head and get food and pay for kids, I suppose. But in terms of lower middle class, I almost think to an extent, is it almost the same thing? You're just getting paid for it. And then eventually, obviously, the banks, the government make the money off you, paying taxes or whatever, keeping your money in the bank. And then that money makes the rich richer, as some would say. Right, so that's an argument sort of against crony capitalism, right? Yes, exactly. Right, because capitalism, like despite what anyone says, right, capitalism is good. Yes. Right, that's that's a fact. Like the most free and liberal societies are all capitalist. Yep. That's just, that's that's what it is. Like you, you, have, the, you have the option to engage in wealth, commerce, and, and ultimate freedom, right? The thing that people get, twisted about this i don't think we're going to get this philosophical but let's do it um oh, the, that's what i'm here for <laughs> yeah the thing the thing that people get misconstrued is crony capitalism right and that's corporatism and that is the rich just get richer and i don't and and, and they get richer through definite you know through government policies and you want to get specific 
one of these government policies is negative gearing. I'm not sure if you no, know what negative so, gearing so, is. Yeah, so so for your that. audience, maybe they're not old enough to understand this, but negative, ge negative gearing is essentially a tax write-off of an asset oh, okay, that yeah. um, doesn't, bring you that doesn't actually bring you positive gains in the yeah. short term right yeah. now you, you can have multiple people own multiple properties negatively gear them so they're not so they're tax deductible on the on the, on the property yeah. that yeah. the revenue the, in the revenue yeah. lost yeah but in the long term that produces an asset a lot more cash flow, a lot more yeah. cash flow when you sell out or whatever so those sort of policies are in play to keep richer people rich that's yeah. a fact right um so we have a society that, um, and this is purely through government expansion. The government is getting bigger. The government is having more of a say in your life than they have. That's that's what it is. And again, I think tech and security of, well, the whole idea of tech was to bring freedom to people's, you know, voice and opinion. However, they that's now- true. That, That's the thing. It's now not true because they can ban you, they, again, cancel and all the other stuff. Right. And they, the government almost- speaks loudly about keeping people safe yeah when at the end of the day their safety is ultimately making them profit off it in that in that sense of almost they make you think you're, you're providing safety for you in return for the taxes and all that other stuff but obviously you need to have them to an extent mm -hmm. but again that's why they these governments grow and so on but can keep continuing with your point right so like like i guess i'll ask you a question here okay and, and that is, what do you think should be done about the tech companies like Facebook and Instagram? I think, I think, it's, I think it's tough because obviously I could get to a whole other sector of, you know, the young people's minds getting brainwashed with the short form videos that just mush. Because you've heard about the how China prescribed to the like young how, people, yeah. you know, the whole idea of they like, teach good things you know how to yeah, like, yeah exactly because like it's because they're chinese, chinese like, company in china the tiktok the, the chinese yeah. people see is all about science science and, and engineering and, and mathematics and, at, even, and but and then in the us or western but impor world important things yeah, important like, things and then in, western world in is western dancing. world you get you get tits and ass yeah exactly that's all yeah, i i because i mean you i mean i feel like you're a joe rogan guy or some of to some extent possibly is that what you've heard that i mean Not even i mean joe rogan is the fantastic uh, interviewer. Yeah. He has a, a brilliant podcast, one of the best stand up comedians in the world. 100%. And, um, you know, if you, if, if Joe Rogan's not an influence of mine, he's not an influence on anyone in my field. Yeah. So, you know, Joe Rogan is, and, and for, I don't care what anyone says about it, like, oh, Joe Rogan is this Joe. Rogan. He's not. You haven't listened to him. Listen to him at length, and you won't have those anti Joe Rogan sentiments that you might yeah. have. That's just, a, that's just what it is. Joe Rogan's a champion. Yeah. A, um, yeah, I think and, it's the same and as... He's a, and, he, and, and, and he's a champion of the left. Yeah. Right? I consider myself an old school lefty. Like if for all your audience members out there, there are, you know, th the, there are people that you should watch uh, and listen to. Uh, Stephen Fry. You should watch and listen to people like Christopher Hitchens. You should watch and listen to people all across the spectrum. Right? You should listen to Jordan Peterson. Yeah, you should listen. To, yeah, you should listen to Ben Shapiro. Yeah, Ben Shapiro as well. You should listen to everybody, right? And Joe Rogan listens to everybody, and he That's creates his he own is. opinion, forms it based off that. He, he yeah. doesn't always agree or disagree. with I don't him. agree with everything Joe Rogan. Yeah, says. Yeah, and no, as you shouldn't. I don't agree with everything my dad says. I still love that guy. Yeah, exactly. You shouldn't base your own opinions and beliefs of someone else's to a hundred percent. That's why I think. I didn't want to. I didn't want to go to it. I didn't think we want to go there. But the Andrew Tate thing. Yeah. I'm sure you'd have some strong opinion about it. But I wouldn't say strong opinions on Andrew Tate. But I would say that, um, I think Andrew Tate actually has a lot of good things to say. Yep. I don't care what that's. I don't. I honestly don't care what that sounds like. I'm. I'm done hiding behind this. Oh, got to be careful about be careful like whatever. What say, yeah. A Andrew Tate says some things that are very true. I, I think it's the same thing that we were saying with Joe Rogan. People look at the short clips, but if you listen to full length, what they say and take all the context into it, they have a lot of reasoning. They have a lot of reasoning. I think, uh, I didn't think we were going to go all this way, but obviously the 10%, whatever you want to call it, with the whole misogyny thing, I think, yes, you can't, but again, you can't agree to every point someone says. Yeah. But in terms of, would, Men, do you reckon Andrew Tate would have been the easiest guy to meet too? 
Oh, I, I think I I think he. Why hasn't he been me too yet? I think. I think the way he does he, because he's very well. He's very good with words. So I think. But if he honestly treats women how people say he treats and views women, wouldn't you think he'd be me too by now? I think you'd think so, but no one has come out and ever said anything. So again, he he repeats it often. He says he's dumb, never. Been, he says dumb I, things, and everyone does. Are, you, are we allowed to swear on this? Yeah, go go. Right. go he okay. says dumb shit. Yeah, that's a fact, right? He says dumb shit, but who doesn't? He says some things that you might think are off color, but who doesn't? And I think the, a lot a lot of people like and consume. If you don't, and if you don't say dumb shit, you're not trying hard enough. And yeah, you're right. A lot of people say dumb shit, but the te- the ten percent people look at with the shortened versions with the misogyny and all that other type of stuff. He's really helped a lot of men, especially, I guess, with the mental health side, the money side, working hard side. I think that's the most important part that near people need to listen to. I you think just listen to everybody. Who cares? Yeah, you don't exactly. have to agree. Just listen don't to agree. Exactly. You don't you gotta listen and form don't your own listen. opinions based yeah. off people. Don't listen to everybody and think, oh that's my opinion. Yeah. Say, oh I agree with this, agree with that. It's just it's called a marketplace. Yeah, exactly. A marketplace of ideas. The best the best form of ideas. Um I was going to say, again, I didn't think, again, we we're going to go this philosophical, but yeah. do you want to be remembered after death? I don't care. You don't care? No. Why is that? Because I'll be dead. <laughs> That's as fair of an answer as it gets. Uh, I'll finish up here. Mm-hmm. Final question. You can take this any direction you'd like. When is enough enough? Let that simmer for a bit. When is enough enough? This can be career, monetarily, people, if you want to go that far, people, enough of people, whichever way you take it. Enough is enough when, when I think enough is enough when your children are more successful than you. Is it the old idea of how the mentor becomes the master type of thing? No. Do you when think your that? your children are more successful than you have ever been. That's when you know you've done well. That's where you you feel like your lessons have gone to the next generation almost? It's not even your, not even your lessons. Because your lessons might be bad. It's when your kids and your kids' kids are doing awesome. Like that's really cool. And I don't have any kids myself, but I reckon that that's the it. The feeling would be pretty awesome. I reckon anyway. that's it. Like I reckon as soon as your kids are doing really, really cool things and you're really proud of your kids and, and you, you've done your job. Is you've that because you feel like the next generation, you're hopeful will help better impact the world and all that type of thing as well? Well, I mean, if we, like, I don't know what you think, but like everyone's been raised on this whole idea that the planet's going to hell in a handbasket yeah. and everyone's been told that they're pieces of shit, they're misogynists, they're white supremacists and you know everyone's a racist and everyone's a sexist and a homophobe, but that's simply not true. We are becoming more of a free society we're becoming more loving, more open, more caring, and we care more about the planet and we care more about other people than anyone in the history has ever cared. We are doing really, really well. Have an optimistic viewpoint in, on, on life, have an optimistic view on the earth, and it will be a self-fulfilling prophecy. The world is as good as the people in it. Don't worry about leaving a better earth. Leave better people to make the earth better. More important than anything. People are the best thing. Be a humanist. Have I love humanity. I really, really do. Same thing, I same really thing. love people. I wouldn't do this job if I didn't love people. I wouldn't want to get on a mic and talk in front of people if I didn't yeah. love people, man. I seriously love feeling. people. People are the best. People are inherently good. People are inherently just. There is just a few people that don't that don't do it and they get broadcast, right? People are good. Your mum is awesome. Your dad is awesome. I'm sh- I, I know them a little bit. They're great people. Uh, your grandma is hilarious, right? I, I, people are just awesome. That's what it is. Humanity is good. There is goodness there. There is a fantastic nature in humanity. There is community and spirit and love and kindness. And that is more important than anything else. That is it. The, the value that you place on human life, the value that you place in human beings is is so important it's paramount humanity fuck yes
That's I think that is as good of a finish we can get. You took the words out of my mouth. Thank you no for just participating. This was sick. We and do this again. We can do this. We do this about every week. Every week. I don't really care. This oh, this was yeah. great. I bring more questions every week. Yeah. Heading out. Thank you.